All right, hey guys, uh, this is gonna be a bit of a different video today. Um, so I ended up sitting down and doing some coding last night. Started around 5 p.m., fell asleep around 11. And essentially what I made is a bit of a start of a tower defense game. So <laughs> what you're seeing on screen is the current progress. Um, obviously a little bit of a headbutting issue with the tower bases. So for context, for what you're seeing, the teal hexagon is the base that you have to defend. The green squares are where your towers spawn from. Um, the first red hexagon here is an enemy spawner. I'm probably going to make that purple. Don't know why I made it green. Um, all of these little red dots are enemies, and you press start the game to actually start this waves, and you can hit buy a tower to purchase a blue triangle that will sit on top of the last green square you clicked on, and it will track the nearest enemy that is within the range. I did start the very beginning of the day just making some programmer art so we've got different colored circles hexagons squares and triangles because we need that um and then i dove into coding so we've got a lot of systems i put together so for the towers we have the tower controller which is the core dictionary class um, it uses a dictionary to track a list of all the tower bases which are let me just boot the game up. So the tower bases are the green squares. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and buy a tower for when I need one for an example. Um, so, these, all of those are tracked in this dictionary. They're given an ID code, which is stored along with every other ID in the ID tag class. So every object will have an ID tag. And... When a, when a tower base is created by the map loader, it's sent through um, registration, which will then get the ID tag and assign an ID and then, um, you know, go to the next ID. So we start at ID zero, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. cetera. Uh, when we sell a tower, we go look it up in the tower base we get its tower base and then we destroy the child. Um, and yeah, we have a function because we s track which tower base is currently selected in this class. And that is done by when a tower base is clicked, it reports in here and it says, hey, this is my ID code. Um, please, if anything in the UI requests to work with a tower base, th I'm the one that wants. Uh, it's the same thing for buying towers. We just receive from the UI a, hey, I want to buy a test tower in this case. Um, and then if the wallet has enough gold based on the level loader's data, which is um, we're just basically looking up the base price, which each tower price script has a base price and the upgrade prices. So when you attempt to purchase a tower, it says, okay, do you have enough money? Uh, which sends it off to the wallet, which does have gold if gold greater than or equal to the amount. Return true, else false. And it has a spend gold function, which we'll also be looking at, which is just subtracting gold from the wallet. Easy peasy. Um, and if it does, then we instantiate it on... We instantiate that type of tower. We set it to the tower base list. And we then go get the tower base and we tell it you have enough, you have a child. Uh, so when you give it a child, it just, yeah, spawn child equals to add. So the child that we sent it and has tower equals true. So in any case, if the tower base, uh, we don't have anything that needs this yet, but if the tower base has to care if it has a child, uh, or has tower currently, we're going to track that yes or no. Um, and same thing, if you want to destroy a tower, voila. Destroy the spawn child has tower equals false. So, 
we then have tower rotation. So not every single tower is going to rotate, obviously. So I made rotation its own separate script that can be put on different towers. Um, and it is going to get the component targeting, which is this one, because every tower is most likely going to have targeting, but not necessarily. Uh, you can have targeting, or you can have rotation, or you can just have it constantly blind firing stuff or doing an AoE. So I made them separate. Uh, or giving it like a buff. Who knows? Um, so targeting um, will essentially handles the range, gets the tracks the current target, has different modes. The default is nearest, can either lock on or not how long it'll lock on. So essentially if it is locked on for 10 seconds and you want it to automatically, you know, attempt to make another target, we could do that. Um, how long it's been locked onto the current target and a quick reference to the wave controller just because the wave controller was used a lot and I didn't want it constantly doing game object dot find da 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 da. I I was just like, no, we're not writing this a thousand times, and that's going to slow it down if I'm calling this a thousand times. We'll call it once at start, and we'll just store the wave controller. Um, so on update, it checks if it's a locking type turret and the current target is null, then we implement the lock time by delta time, and if C lock time greater than max lock time, or it's out of range. Uh, C lock time equals zero, and we find a target. Otherwise, if we're not a locking target, we just find a target. So, if our mode is nearest, um, we set our current target distance temporary variable to nine, 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 and if C target is null, we just C target equals vector two dot distance. So, or not null is not null. I'm an idiot. So if we have no target currently, or no, if we do have a target currently, we go ahead and we get our distance to the current target. And then for each enemy in the wave controller's enemy list, we go ahead, we calculate the distance. If it's closer than the current distance, then the current distance becomes it and the current target becomes that. And then we iterate through everything until we find the closest target. So that is that. I already did rotation. Um, yeah, so towers don't currently shoot. That is the next thing. And that will um, be worked in with this targeting system. It's going to be its own separate script because it's going to be a ballistic script. So only towers that use that will have it. So each tower is going to be modularly built. Um, just to make it easier to add new types of towers. That way I don't have to be like, oh, I have to rework this entire system to add the new Tesla turret, or I don't know, you know, whatever. <laughs> so now we have enemies. Um, so enemies are pretty simple right now. They have three scripts they work with, movement, ID tag, and health, and then one I haven't actually used for anything, which is called Critter Spawner. So movement, I just went ahead and implemented, um, we use a path beacon list. I guess I need to go over that too, um, how the path beacons work. Uh, so <laughs> we can have, you could just throw in a string, it's either slide or lurch for two different movement types right now. Uh, you have the speed they move at, the step speed for lurching only, uh, the step timer also for lurching the current goal. So that is which one of these, because it's a list, uh, which one of these that we're aiming at currently, which, uh, yeah, if they miss the base currently, this can error out, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, I'll just cap that out later. Should actually probably do that for today. That'll be one of my things. Um, and so if movement type is slide, so we're just sliding at the enemy, we literally just transform dot position equals vector two move towards. So we're literally just sliding it across the screen. Super easy, done, boof. Um, otherwise, if we're lurching at the enemy, so in other words, we're taking, if, if we just go like this, 
Um, <laughs> not a great way to do it, but yeah, uh, I haven't actually tested this script, so I don't know if it works for sure. So step timer, time to delta time, if step timer greater than step. So in other words, if we've reached this amount of time passed, um, you already saw that in the tower stuff, uh, step timer equals zero, always reset that, and then transform by position, we just move at the speed. So for this one, it's because it's literally the same script. This one, the speed is, you know, you expect it to be kind of low. This one, you want your speed to be really fast because you're instantaneously moving over a very short distance or over a very large distance very quickly. That's what the lurching is. Um, and then if we have reached our current target's position, so we just check, yeah, is the path beacon's current position within 0 0.1 of our position? Yes, okay, then we, reach the, then we have reached the next beacon, which just implements the current goal by one, so just plus one. Uh, ID tag, we already went over it. Everything has an ID tag. Uh, health. So this one is a little bit um, worked into the base system as well. So there's some stuff for bases in here, and there's some stuff for enemies. And there's probably going to end up being some stuff for projectiles also. Uh, just because I want a uniform health system. So... Um, yeah, this is all, this is base related. So we're not gonna look at that. Um, so we initialize it at the beginning. We just set our max health and our current health. Uh, and max health equals base health, which we're taking in. And current health equals max health. We have an ability to inflict damage, which is right here, which you send an amount, current health minus amount, if health greater than M health, Current health equals M health. So if you have more health than your maximum health, um, that's probably not right. And we're going to just fix that. <laughs> if current health is less than or equal to zero. If you're not a base, we want to go ahead. That's actually also going to be. Um, and not projectile. So we're going to be adding that when we add projectiles into the system. Um, find game object with controller, the wave controller. So we go ahead and find the wave controller, and we destroy ourselves. We give the signal to destroy us, and then we destroy ourselves. We just poof out of existence. Um, and then we have the heal ability, which is literally just an amount in, and then we inflict a negative amount of that damage. So <laughs> it's it's literally just an inversion for being lazy. So I'm going to go ahead and save this little change. Um, and then I have the critter spawner. Again, this hasn't been tested. Um, so we're actually going to skip over it for right now. we do path sequences next. Um, I guess we do need to do path sequences. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so the next thing is the path sequences. Um, so they are controlled via an array of beacons. So these beacons, there is currently a path beacon script. Um, as you can see, it's empty because it doesn't do anything. Um, anything can technically be given as a path beacon. I've just created these specific objects. Um, a, B, and C, just because I was having issues on day one getting them working properly. Um, but yeah, so path sequence, you just have a list of game objects which have been labeled by this script as beacons. Um, we initialize the list of beacons, and then we just have the ability to add a beacon or to retrieve the entire list of beacons. So, um, what happens... Uh, let's just go to movement. So we have our path beacon list. So this is loaded into these guys. Each enemy has a reference to the path beacon list. Um, so, and that is done by the wave controller when enemies are spawned in. So <laughs> the wave controller is kind of complex. So we've got the current enemies, 
waves to spawn, wave delays, spawner list, uh, the next ID tag, because everything has ID tags, um, the currently selected enemy, uh, we don't do anything with that yet, but um, much like we did with the tower controller, where it selects, you know, what tower is currently selected, um, we're doing the same thing, but with enemies. You know, that way, if you, if I, if I want to have a UI panel that shows information about the current enemy, that way you can, like, click on enemies and see, like, oh, this guy has 7 health and 13 armor, and he has a rocket pack. I don't know. Who knows? Um, that way I have a way to implement that later. Uh, and we check if the wave controller is currently, we have a, basically, so that we can turn the wave controller on and off, that way I can pause the game from enemy spawning. And then the current wave. So, at start, we just implement current enemies as a dictionary. Uh, on update, if running and enemy count equals zero, we queue the next wave. Uh, so, to queue the wave, that should be first. Also, I don't really need these. Let's just comment these out really quickly. It's going to bug me, though. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, to cue the wave, we just go for each game object in wave to spawn current wave. So, everything in here, uh, we just add it to the spawner list, which is on the spawn beacon ability. So, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, we can activate this. So, this is just triggered by the start game button right here. So that runs this script, which literally just turns running to true. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to change that to not running. There we go. So that will invert. If it's running, it'll turn it on. If not, it'll turn it off. That's actually... Well, we're not going to test that right now, but that's what it'll do. Um, then we have spawn enemy. So spawner list, spawner ID, add to queue template. So templates are... Uh, right here, so this test enemy right here is currently the only template it can spawn. So, all you do is you can pass in the template directly. Um, register an enemy. So when an enemy is created by a spawn beacon, um, it passes that enemy over. We then go get the... Um, we then add that to the enemy registry, which is the current enemy dictionary. And then we take the enemy, we grab its ID tag, and we tell it, hey, this is your ID. And then we move on to the next ID. Uh, we also have the ability to destroy an enemy by ID. So we just, yeah, current enemy is dot remove. So we just remove it from the dictionary. And then we have the ability to just grab the entire enemy list, just return it. So then we have the spawn beacon. Um, so we just go ahead, we've got everything. We've got the current path sequence, which is all of these red hexagons plus the base at the end. Um, and then the spawn queue, which whenever we tell it to spawn something, we're going to be handling that in here. Uh, a list of the index IDs of the spawn queue, the max spawn timer, da, 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 next ID to hand out, because of course we have to hand out IDs. Um, at the start, we just initiate these two as objects. And so what we do, as you saw, the um, wave controller adds stuff to the queue. So we just hand it a game object. We say, Q, add a copy of this. Here's your next ID to spawn. We add it to the index also. We then go to the next ID. And if the ID is over 50,000, we reset the ID. There's no reason to go above 50,000. If I have if I have an enemy that is alive, 49,999 enemies have spawned after it. I'm willing to accept that as a possible crash condition. And when that ha the day that happens and somebody reports, uh, this bugged out, I need you to fix it. I'm just going to go, boop, <laughs> and increase that by one, <laughs> one zero. That way it's 500,000. But um, I don't 
anticipate this ever needing to change. <laughs> if there are 50,000 enemies on screen, there are larger issues. <laughs> we then do our update. So if game object find, so if the wave controller is running, then we implement time by delta time. And if it's greater than our maximum spawn speed, then we set it back to zero. We instantiate the next item in queue. We teleport it to us because we're a spawn beacon. We then remove it from the queue index and we remove it from, or from the queue and the queue index. And we then go ahead, find the wave controller and we register the new enemy with it. And then we hand the enemy the uh, beacon list. So, which we've already gone over, the beacon list is just a list of game objects representing the path that enemies should move along. Path beacon itself is empty, so I'm just going to close that. Uh, and yeah, so that is the enemy spawning system. So the only other thing we have is critter spawner. This is an completely untested code. It's never been run. I've never attached it to an enemy. But essentially what it should do is it should take whatever this is set to, which is by default one. It should take a game object template. So it'll be some kind of little critter. Uh, and it this determines if it happens on death or not. So you can make this hopefully be able to be triggered manually by some other script instead of on death. <laughs> um, which actually, uh, we're missing a bit of code here. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. So if on death, then it's too early in the morning for me to be coding. If on death, no, not an, not an eight, then we trigger the spawn. So, um, basically with this script on here, on destroy, so when this object is destroyed, if on death, trigger spawn, then we trigger the spawn, which we create a new game object and we store it in this variable temporarily. We teleport it to us. Uh, we register it with the wave controller. And then we give it the beacon list. And then we repeat. And we just go through that however many times this says we're going to do it. So we do it one time and voila. And that should theoretically, when an enemy dies, spawn more enemies. So that, that way you can have like a little burster or whatever. Uh, let's see. And that is everything to do with enemies currently. So the next thing to do is the map loading system. So what we're going to do for that. Um, so we're clear. Uh, the only things in here are the camera and the game controller. There's no other objects actually in this scene until we hit play. Like, all of these spawn in when we hit play. And they are created by the XML loader script. And how that works is we've got four scripts. We've got the XML loader, the wave library, the map library, and the loading tag. The loading tag, um, I thought I needed it. I don't think I do. This is kind of redundant code because all it does is um, it's literally just the tag or the name of the object. So uh, this was made due to me having some errors with a bunch of stuff, and I'm probably going to remove it today. But anyway. Um, so the first thing is we have the XML loader, which will load a list of XML documents, which each look like this. So this one's a wave document. So we put waves at the top. Uh, we then have an index, which means that we're on a new entry. And then you have various fields, name, description. So these are loaded once, and then we have delay and multiple enemies. So delay indicates we're loading an actual wave and then all of the different enemies. So, and then map 
we have the same kind of deal. Uh, we're loading a map, index, name, description, zone, uh, tile, terrain, tile, terrain, tile, terrain. So tile is the location we want it to be spawned at and terrain is what the actual object is. I did borrow my XML system from another game I built previously, which is why the names are kind of weird and funky. Um, I'm gonna be renaming everything just to make it more appropriate today, but for right now it works. So essentially what this does is we've got a whole bunch of strings, these just, you know, uh, we also have another XML file, which I just need to go ahead and open, which is right here. So it just is the inclusion of those two files. So we load this one for sure from this folder. And we're looking for this every time we want to start a new, you know, pile. Um, so we then just read everything in, we debug it, or we list in the debug log, we do our file lists, and we do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we then read the file itself into date, into memory. We take this, we break it down into um, key pairs. So the key pairs are two strings, enemy, and then test enemy or delay and five, you know, or you can set this to like whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, so you just go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and it just lists all of those out into an array, um, and a, a paired array. And then we hand that off. If it's waves, we hand it off to the wave library. If it's a map, we hand it off to the map library. Anyway, so <laughs> the wave library, so, we get name, description, wave composition, delays. So the wave composition is probably the most confusing thing that is currently uh, coded. So it's a dictionary indexed by strings of lists of lists of strings. <laughs> so you have a dictionary that can be sorted by any index. So you type in like L level one. So you type like level one in and it'll return you a list of lists of strings. <laughs> so you then go, okay, um, I want the first list in the, I want, I want number one. So then that will return you the list of strings. <laughs> so basically it's a it's a dictionary of different levels, each of which has a list. So each level has a list of lists. And then each list itself, like each final list here. Um, oops, oops, don't do that. Each final list is the actual wave composition. So that's what enemies are going to spawn. So, yeah. So... It's a dictionary with the key of L1, and then it takes everything here and bundles it up. So yeah, it, it basically, it's, it's fun. So then we're just loading that data into the index appropriately. Um, then you can get the wave count, get wave name by ID, all that kind of stuff, fun. Same with map library, it does the exact same thing, except for it's not nearly as confusing. So it's because it's just a, <laughs> it's just a dictionary uh, sorted by the strings of the freaking uh, positions. And then what tower, what tower should be spot. So we load all the data in and then it can plop all of these out. So, that is how we load from XML. And then we take all of that information. Where did it go? And we hand it into the level loader, which does a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> so this is the biggest class I did last night. This took me about an hour and a half. Everything else took between 10 to 15 minutes. This one took an hour and a half. Um, 
So it has a dictionary of the map components, the enemies, the towers, and three path sequences. Um, I'm going to change this to be a list of path sequences, but for right now, I just hard coded them ABC. Um, so what it does is it sets map components, enemies, and towers as dictionaries indexed by a string of game objects. And it then does a load. So resources.load all. So it loads all of the map components into load. And then for each of them, it goes ahead and adds it to the library via the index is the loading tag information, which could literally just me be the game object's name, but I couldn't get it working, so I ended up using the loading tags. So it just looks up that loading tag that's attached to every object that is loadable, um, and it indexes it into map components via, or indexed under that tag. Then we just log it out. Uh, I actually don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Oh, oh, do I have insert on? I do have insert on. Oops. Okay, there we go. So then we do the same thing. We load the towers. So it just goes through, loads anything in the towers folder of prefabs as a tower. Same thing, enemies. Anything in the enemies folder gets loaded in. And then we're going to spawn map. And I just, I've just got it hard-coded. So the map L1 will be hard-loaded. So when it does that, because this runs at the beginning. Um, it goes ahead and looks through everything that can be spawned that's labeled in, not this, no, no, that's junk. Um, it goes through, because we've, you have to remember, we've loaded this under the name L1 into the, um, XML libraries. So it loads all of these objects and it goes through and it goes, it finds each tile. And at this position, it spawns this item, etc, etc, etc. So let's just go ahead and we'll see that in work. So that is the layout before. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to spawn this at two negative three. I've never done a negative, so we'll, this is literally a pretty good test actually. So instead, hmm, yeah, that's, I don't think that worked. Is negative three. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. It spawned it down here. I was like, what the, <laughs> but yeah, so we spawn things in with the level loader. So we spawn the map itself and then we load the waves. So let's just go ahead, spawn map. So yeah, so it goes ahead, creates the three path sequences, initializes the beacons, and then anytime it comes across something, because it loops through everything, so it gets the locations uh, from the library, it gets the objects from the library, and then it loads all of the objects in and it goes through them in a big loop. So it goes ahead and it tries to spawn it. So it logs what it's it logs. What's it's oh my, it logs what it's attempting to spawn. <laughs> and then it tries to instantiate that via its map components library. So it looks to see if it's a thing. Uh, it then teleports it to the location specified uh, by the tile location index. And then it checks what it is. If it's a path beacon A, B, or C, it puts it into the appropriate path beacon listing. If it's a base, it also adds it to the beacons. So currently you want to have your bases at the end. And then if it's a spawn beacon... Uh, it's going to load the, yeah, it's going to hand it the path. So if it's A, it gives it A. If it's B, it gives it B, etc. And we're going to add a spawner list. We add it to the spawner list. 
And if it's a tower base, then we register it with the tower controller. And then once we're done our big for loop, then we hand the spawner list over to the wave controller. So the next thing we do is we load our waves, which is kind of kind of similar, but much smaller, because we literally are just getting our wave list and our yeah, we get our wave list uh, from the wave library, and then we get our convert it list. So it's a list of game objects. So we're converting the strings to game objects essentially, and then so for each um, yeah for each list in wave list we go ahead and we convert them over to game objects. And we convert them over, and then we output a debug log, which I don't need. And then we find the wave controller and we hand it the waves that we want to load. And load delays is literally just go to the wave library, get the delays, hand it to the wave controller <laughs> it's just done <laughs> so uh and that is the loading sequence so that's done at boot up currently um load load map components is called at the beginning by the xml loader because it literally just once the xml loader is done we just load the map um so this is probably going to be handled a little differently later on, but for now it just gets us to a very quick boot up, which is what I want at this point. I just want to be able to just hit the button and just go. So the next thing to talk about is just what my plans are for the future. Um, what I'm hoping to get done today, or at least this weekend, is I want projectiles to shoot out of the towers, obviously, and I want them to kill enemies. I want um, to make a little bit of a level um, editor. That way I can generate these XML files without me literally having to go through and type all of this. I just want to make a level designer, and I don't want to do it in Unity. I, I don't know. I've never liked the Unity designer. I just want a little tool, so I'm going to build that. And I'm also going to build one implemented into that, hopefully, that can also do waves. Um, and those are going to be part of the game itself, um, which means I'm also going to need a main menu, which allows me to select, do I want to play, do I want to design a level, or do I want to design waves? And because I want to do it all within the same project, that way when I start selling this or, you know, whatever, um, you know, you guys can actually design levels yourself. Um, and the reason I got to do it in here as well is so that we have access to all of these map components, towers, and enemies loaded in. Um, uh, that's why I'm using the whole, um, map slash wave library system. There's also going to be, yeah, and there's the enemy dictionary, which I could have sworn had something in it, but apparently not. But yeah, um, essentially it gives access to everything uniformly. Uh, so those are the plans. Towers shooting, bunch of different types of towers, couple different types of enemies, going to make one that explodes on death to test the critter spawner and I'm going to probably implement the level and wave designing tool that's today's goals so those five things so um yeah with that that is the end of today's devlog I hope you guys enjoyed this or could at least understand some of it uh, I'm not the most coherent creator in the world <laughs> sometimes, especially when I'm trying to do multiple things. I'm not like super, I'm not working like super hard on organizing this, I guess. I just kind of like off the top of my head decided, okay, we're going to do this. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's coherent and let me know in the comments what you guys think if you'd enjoy playing this. Uh, yeah. So, bye.